walk the dogs, school drop-off, meetings from 10 to 3, take kids to soccer, then no time left for a jog. When everyone else is relying on you, it's easy to put your needs last. BetterHelp connects you with a licensed therapist online, so you can show up for yourself the way you do for others. Visit BetterHelp.com slash positive to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp.com slash positive. What you watch depends on what kind of mood you're in. Sometimes you're craving comedies like Friends or South Park, and sometimes you're more into dramas like HBO's Succession and House of the Dragon. There's also cooking shows like Chopped and Beat Bobby Flay, and even movies like The Lord of the Rings and Shazam! Fury of the Gods. Well, Max is the streaming destination that has the best of entertainment for whatever mood you're in, anytime. And plans start at as little as $9.99 a month. Max, the one to watch. Subscription required. Visit max.com. Welcome back, everybody. It's Sports Daily on a Monday here on KFH. Tommy Castor, along with Paul Savage. And uh, I got to tell you, Paul, uh, I got a little bit of a story to to tell from over the weekend that uh, was really awesome. Uh, and I posted about it on my social media. Uh, so anybody that follows me on Twitter or Facebook or whatever, they, they know about this. And so I, I know you probably saw it. Uh, my my two-year-old, his birthday is actually today. Um, so he turns two years old today. Um, of course, we had our new baby uh, last weekend. And our, our baby came about a month early. So kind of unexpected for my wife and I. Uh, and unfortunately for our toddler, that meant that his second birthday party was going to have to be canceled. We just, we, we weren't able to do it, you know, with the newborn and all of that. And, you know, he, our, our toddler's young enough. We felt like he wouldn't really know the difference, but I felt bad about it. I thought, you know what? I want to do something for him. Um, you know, something fun that he'll enjoy. So I took him to a wind surge game on Saturday night and he loved it. He's gone to a couple of these games before and just sits on my lap, watches the game, has a really good time. And I had no idea, didn't ask for it, didn't, you know, uh, I didn't organize it or anything, but my son got to be the kid of the game at the really? Windsor's game on Saturday night. And so they came and, uh, you know, they, they put him on camera and introduced him and all of that. So that was really cool. That was, you know, shout out to wow. the wind surge for doing that for him. Cool. Um, you know, because, uh, you know, if you got, if you've got multiple kids, you know, you know that when a, a new baby comes, it can be hard for the older siblings sometimes and feeling like they're, you know, forgotten and all of that. And so that was a, that was a really cool deal to be able to celebrate him and, and, you know, at least have him feel like he was having a good birthday. Wow. So this, this is a kid that, that pays attention to the ball game at his age. Cause it's hard to do yeah. for a lot of kids. I mean, they're going to uh, feel the urge to go play and run and explore and maybe find someone yeah. else in the stands that of their age and, you know, m- you know, make off and go do th- I mean, that's pretty good. That's, that tells me something about uh, about your two year old. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Like we took him to a game a couple of months ago, and my wife and I thought, you know what, we're gonna give it a try. Um, but we were pretty sure that he was gonna be a, a nightmare. Like he was gonna want to run around and play, and you know all of that stuff. He didn't. He sat on my lap the entire game and just watched and followed the ball wherever wow. it went. Like loved it. And so I was like, you know what, I think we've got ourselves a baseball fan. Uh, in the family. And so I took him back on, on Saturday. He did the same thing, sat on my lap. He enjoyed some, some French fries and a cheeseburger and drank his juice and just watched the game. So hopefully we've got more of that coming wow. down the road, but really cool. I mean, I'm really uh, super grateful to the wind surge for, um, you know, recognizing him. And, and it was, that was really cool. That was a really special like father son moment that uh, I got to have with well, him. That's just tremendous. You don't get those very often. And you know, the older they get, uh, you know, the more they, they happen less frequently. But that is really cool. Enjoy them at this age. Every age is a different stage, isn't it? Boy, isn't that – you've probably figured that out with your two-year-old now. Every <laughs> yeah, every you, every week or two, it's a different stage for something, isn't it? So you yeah, just enjoy the, it. We're, Roll with the punches yeah, and go. We're in the stage right now with our two-year-old Cooper where his favorite word is no. 
Uh -huh. uh, everything is no. You want to go do this? No. You want to take a nap? No. You want to go to bed? No. You want to take a bath? No. Like everything is no. Uh, and so just trying to, you know, overcome that a little bit uh, with him. But, I, you know, it's just a phase and, and you know, every kid has them and goes through it. Uh, but that was that was really cool. I wanted to try to find a way to, right. you know, make him feel right. you know, special. Well, considering we had to cancel his birthday party because his baby brother decided Dang to show yeah, up early. I got you. So, That's cool, anyway, though, Tommy. Uh, that's yeah, cool, cool, man. cool story. Just wanted to share that and say thank you to the wind surge. Uh, back here on Sports Daily, by the way, the IHOP hotline is 869-1240. If you'd like to join the program like Robert did in the first segment uh, talking about the NBA Finals, of course, you can also join our video stream and leave your comments right there on the screen. Jason did that uh, a little bit ago as well, so thanks to Jason for that. You can watch us on Facebook, on YouTube, and on Twitter. Uh, I mentioned wind surge baseball. We're going to stick with the baseball theme and talk a little bit about shocker baseball. Paul, I know you and Jacob talked about this at length last week, the decision that was made to not retain Lauren Hibbs as the head coach of Wichita State Baseball after a 30 and 25 season as the interim head coach. Uh, and now over the weekend, we don't have any kind of official confirmation on this, but over the weekend, in fact, it was yesterday, D1 Baseball's Kendall Rogers reported that Kevin Saul will be hiring Brian Green, who is the head coach currently at Washington State University. Uh, Green also spent time at New Mexico State and was at Kentucky as an assistant when Kevin Saul worked in the front office at the University of Kentucky. This after uh, a national search was uh, scheduled to be launched. I'm assuming this is part of the national search. But again, no confirmation from Wichita State that this is official yet. Uh, however, we do have reporting from over the weekend that Brian Green will be the new head coach at Wichita State Baseball. Your thoughts on that, Paul? Well, I think this is a situation where the prerogative of, of, a, of an athletic director is to put in the people he's comfortable with, the people that he wants, the people that will, you know, basically either make him successful or get him fired in a few years. And you can't, you cannot blame uh, a Kevin Saul for putting his people in. Uh, and I don't know wh what his relationship with w Lauren Hibbs. Uh, Lawrence Hibbs is a Kansas baseball Hall of Famer, which means I know him, know him, know him fairly well. I mean, I mean, I don't know him, know him like you know you would go over for dinner or something, but. You know, we see each other, we say hello and, and, and converse. Uh, in fact, I voted for him for his induction to the Kansas Baseball Hall of Fame. I was one of the plus votes for him, so I'm, and I'm proud of that vote. But this is Kevin Saul's operation, and, I, and nobody knows this more than Lauren Hibbs, uh, that this is Kevin Saul's decision. This is his program. This is how he puts his stamp upon on, uh, this program. And, man, what a stamp it is, having put in two basketball coaches and now a baseball coach. I mean, this is going lickety-split, isn't it? That's pretty quick. But that's the way the cards are falling, and that's what he's doing. This is now officially, with this hire, I believe this is now Kevin Saul's athletic program. He's got people he wants. He's got people hired in the key positions that he wants. And, and let's see what happens. You know, and I don't have a problem at all with with uh, with Coach Green. Coach Green, I mean his his stats look good. I mean they look decent. He coached at New Mexico, which I like. New Mexico State, I should say, because you know it's tough to do anything and have success in athletics at at uh, New Mexico State. You're the second poor cousin to the University of New Mexico in Albuquerque, and. Uh, you know, facilities aren't as good as a lot of places, D1 places, and he had success there. You show me a guy that can win at the university, at New Mexico State University, and I'll show you somebody that can probably coach pretty good. So I'm going to give Coach Green the benefit of the doubt as to not knowing anything about him, looking at his resume and say, hmm, New Mexico State, hmm, success. I think you got it. Maybe you're pretty good. So with that being said, I don't fault uh, – uh, A.D. saw one bit for putting his people in. If that's what he thinks he needs to do, that's why Wichita State hired him. I like Kevin Saul. I like the conversations that I've had with Kevin Saul. He is thoughtful. He's articulate. Um, you know, he's, he's intelligent. He's all of those things. It also doesn't make him immune from criticism and... I don't like this hire. I don't like the decision that was made to not retain Lauren Hibbs. Uh, and I think that's okay. And I think that that comes with the territory of being an athletic director. 
You know, you're not going to make everybody happy. Uh, you, you know, you're not going to make decisions and make hires that will get the unanimous support of the entire fan base. That's just not reality. That's not the world that we live in. I thought that Lauren Hibbs should have been named the permanent head coach. Uh, I was very clear about that, very vocal about it. Jacob and I discussed it at the very end of the season when Wichita State was eliminated from the American Conference Tournament. I said I thought that Lauren Hibbs had done enough and had stepped into a situation uh, that was less than ideal and rallied the troops and had a really successful season and, oh, by the way, was named the Conference Coach of the Year. And I didn't think that, you know, and this all happened last week when I was out, I didn't think that the decision to not retain the Conference Coach of the Year was the right decision for Kevin Saul to make. I understand the points that you're making. I understand the fact that it is ultimately his athletic department and he wants his people in those roles. I get that and I respect that. You know, it, it, you are basically, when you hire somebody as an athletic director, you are tying your fate to them. And so you want to try to make sure you've got people that you feel comfortable with. I totally understand that. And it's nothing against Brian Green either. I just don't necessarily think that the grass is always greener on the other side. I said this on on Twitter, I think it was, last week, that just because you can make a change doesn't mean that you should make a change. You know, Brian Green, you mentioned his stats are decent. They're decent. They're not amazing. They're not great. They're decent. He was 91 and 79 in his tenure at Washington State. They were eliminated from, or they didn't even make their conference tournament, right? They were 10 and 19 in the Pac-12 this season. They had a losing record. They were sub 500 in their conference. Now, granted, the Pac-12 is a more difficult conference than the American conference is, but still, like it's a sub 500 record in conference play. So I'm just not sure that this is the splashy, high profile hire that would make me or anybody else that thought that Lauren Hibbs should have retained the job say, okay, well, yeah, that's a clear upgrade from Lauren Hibbs because I'm not so sure that it is. Maybe it is. Maybe it's the right decision, but I'm just, I'm not so sure that this was a, a decision that needed to be made other than just the fact that Kevin Saul wanted his guy in the chair. Well, and you make good points. There's, there's no question. I will put it this way though. In the Pac-12, the worst baseball job in the entire conference is probably Washington State. Whether it's the locale, uh, it's it's a tough, tough place to get kids to want to go play baseball. A little easier in football, but in in a, in a sport like baseball, you're basically competing about over half of this conference is a warm weather uh, is warm weather states and locations for their colleges and universities. And you've got several of the greatest baseball, two or three of the greatest baseball pro uh, programs, historically speaking, uh, in the Pac-12, which, of course, would be Arizona State, uh, USC, to a lesser extent, UCLA. These are teams that, uh, even though they're going to the Big Ten, uh, they, are, they are really, really good baseball programs. And, and so when you look at it in terms of, of his success, I also know where, where he's coaching, and it's very, very difficult to be successful there. But with that being said, you know, you talk about uh, uh, Kevin Sow, uh, uh trying to make this decision, but he has worked with uh, Coach Green uh, for a period of time at Kentucky, if I'm not mistaken. And yeah. so they know each yes, other. They have. And it's important – you know, whether we like it or not, it's important for an AD to be comfortable with with his guys. And this is is that his... the most important thing, though. I mean, do you sacrifice potentially the quality of the program for a sense of comfortability with the coach that you hire? Well, I don't know that that's quite what I meant, but I mean, I get your point, and one could 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 extract what I something like that from what I said, but. It's not like he's saying, well, I just want to be comfortable. You know, if I'm comfortable and we fail, then, you know, failure is easier. Right. No, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, is there's got to be something in this guy that uh, that uh, Kevin Saul sees. I don't know what it is. Uh, I, I have no idea. But there's probably something. And uh, I don't know if age is a factor. I mean, I mean, I mean, I'm no spring chicken myself. But on the other hand, you know, I've got a heck of a lot of good you still left in me. Uh, you're getting up there, uh, old guy. You're getting up there as well. <laughs> and so, so anyway, uh, you still have some pretty good wear left in you. Uh, but, you I know, this so. is one of those things where uh, Coach Hibbs is uh, 
uh, maybe he they look on him as maybe being too old for the game. I don't think that's at all the re- I don't think that's right. If that is the case, then I'd be anti you know not uh, getting rid of uh, Coach Hibbs for that. There's got to be something else, and I don't know what it is. And I'm not going to be critical one way or the other because I don't because I've just refused to talk about what I don't know because. Uh, as I'm getting to know uh, Kevin Saul and my my uh, uh, knowledge and, and uh, acquaintances with uh, Lauren Hibbs, you know it's it's tough for me to to try to get in, involved in this in one sure. way or another. But I will say this: this is Kevin Saul's uh, athletic program. He gets to do what he wants, and if he thinks this is the wrong thing to do, he wouldn't do it. He obviously right. thinks it's the right thing to do, and you got to go with that, Tommy. I'm sorry, yeah. and, but and that's what yeah, you look, got. You got to go right. with that. And I'll be the first to say, I hope that this is a, a you, slam dunk hire. I know. I hope do. that Brian that, Green, it, it, assuming that it is Brian Green, like, right. I hope he comes in and has a ton of success right off the bat. And I know that's going to be. I know that's going to be hard to do because yep. as of right now, all but one player, current player players, they're in the transfer portal. Peyton Tolley is the only one that's not in the transfer portal well, as of right now well, hold in on. the program. Hold on. So. Hold on. I, I want to talk. I want to talk more about okay. that. We're going right. to take a break. All right. We're not done with this conversation. You better believe that. Yeah, you better believe that. If you want to, ch- if you <laughs> want to <laughs> chime in on the conversation about the reporting that Wichita State may have hired their new baseball coach, you can join the IHOP hotline eight six nine twelve forty. We'll come right back. We'll continue on the conversation here on Sports Daily.